Hey guys, what's up? It's your boy Black Rue back with another video, back with a fan favorite, uh, uh, one of my personal favorites, my guy Dion from MYC Network. What's up? Boom. <laughs> and what up? What up? What's going on, man? It's good to be back. Um, I, you know, I'm completely a fan of doing this regularly. I think it's fun to. I, you were the only person that introduced me to StreamYard. You know, Justin uh, from Byte Storage tries to take some uh, some credit for it. He did help me install it, but the person that gave me the idea was you, and it's just so easy to use. So I I love that. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, I'll let my guy Justin take some credit. You know, I love Justin at Byte Storage. <laughs> Shout out to him. Uh, yeah, man. So what do you think about this market? People are going nuts because Gary Gensler is coming after like everything right now, even though my man doesn't have any credibility whatsoever. And shout out to Gomes in the chat, by the way. Uh, what's up? You know, I I think we got to get Gomes on stage one of these days, man. I don't sound like you. <laughs> I like yeah, Gomes. Me and Dion were just talking. We said we'll do a call in episode, so be on the lookout for that. Yeah, I, I think we should definitely do one of those. We're just like do some random callers or something. Um, but you know, I I'm incredibly bullish. I've been bullish. You know, if you take a look at a video even I made ten days ago, I was bullish telling people. I know that they're bearish. I I understand it, but you know. I don't care what the sediment is. I watch the data. If I watch the data, it tells me the bigger story. I don't care what the narrative is, what the sediment is. The data is going to prove way more accurate than whatever story is going on. Um, and it gives you a, a better uh, forecast, you know. And uh, previously over the past year and a half, I've been talking about uh, the U.S. dollar draining out due to not only uh, interest rates not being high enough to supersede the inflation rate. Uh, so no matter what, and this was back when the dollar was a, about a dollar ten, um, or uh, or let's say one hundred and ten cents, one hundred and thirteen cents. I said this is not supposed to be this high. It's going to continue crashing from here. You know, bondholders have all the ability and all the reason to dump this dollar at the higher valuation because if they hold the dollar at where it sits now. The inflationary will eat both the principal and the yield. So they're going to dump the bonds, which is going to impact the dollar value. Uh, but not only that, you know, as the dollar goes up in value from interest rate manipulation from the Fed, you still got to understand that, uh, you know, uh, think about it from uh, all these different countries perspective. You know, every central bank around the world represents a particular territory. And those territories are, you know, they have currencies that are tethered to the reserve currency. So you have your basket of currencies. And uh, whenever the, the U.S. dollar, which is your baseline in which all the other assets are measured, you know, if it's going up too high, it's going to weigh down other assets like stocks, precious metals and, and crypto assets. But more importantly, in this scenario, it's going to weigh down other currency asset classes like the yen, uh, the ruble. Uh, the euro, the pound. And, you know, if you guys were paying attention during 2022, the second quarter, uh, both the euro and the pound had collapsed about 20 percent. Uh, so, you know, these were just certain uh, things that I was paying attention to uh, during the bear market last year where I was really trying to harp in when to start rebuying. And I didn't start really rebuying or amping up my purchases until mid-year last year. Um, around, I want to say that 108 mark, because that 108 mark was kind of like, okay, this is a pretty decent time frame to collect. I have extra buying power. Uh, so I was purchasing all the assets I could at the bottoms with that bigger buying power. And this is why I tell a lot of people that are using dollars now to not get comfortable with the dollar uh, buying power that you have today, because the prices right now, they're predicated off of your exchange rate. And that exchange rate is going to get even more expensive as the time goes on, because, uh, you know, as we saw last year, a lot of these central banks that were representing other fiat currencies were needing to dump their their or needing to dump U.S. dollar bonds or U.S. debt or U.S. dollars, however you want to call it. You could take a look at it from a treasury standpoint, a bond standpoint, or just the currency itself. You have an overvalued dollar; it's hurting your currency. So because all these other countries are holding U.S. dollar debt like China or Japan, they have and they can afford to dump massive amounts of dollars in order to compensate the weight of the dollar to protect their peg, 
protect their currency from collapsing. So they dump that liquidity to transfer it to their currency to kind of hedge themselves against the weight of the dollar. And when enough countries do that, you have a currency drain happening on the U.S. dollar. And that's the whole reason why we're at 103. And I do think we're going to you know, fall further uh, below the 100 cent mark as we progress into this year, even more so since the Fed just got through telling us they just admitted to us now that they are going to expand the balance sheet in six months. They also told us uh, two Thursdays ago, I think it was, that they weren't going to be able to pay their bill. Uh, so they were they filed for an extension, which was for six months, where Jerome just recently during the last uh, FOMC meeting said that we need to uh, um, uh, raise the debt ceiling. So because we're going to raise the debt ceiling, he literally just told you right there that they're going to expand the balance sheet, not shrink it. So no matter what we do, no matter what we say, governments are going to follow the same strategy they've been following forever with fiat currencies. If they run into too much debt, they can't pay off. Not enough tax revenue is coming in to pay off the debt that they've accumulated. So guess who's going to pay for it? The citizens via inflation. And, you know, unfortunately, governments, when they borrow too much and they've overexpanded too much, it comes at the expense of the citizen. And they're going to expand the monetary system in order to pay off massive amounts of, of the debt deficit by utilizing uh, assets. So as investors, you know, and again, you know, this is not financial advice. You, you guys make your own bets. I'm going to make mine. Um, but, you know, what they're doing right now is they're leveraging asset prices because assets go up with inflation, not down. See, the problem of what happened last year, and I'm sorry to be so long winded on this. Um, it, it really is a long story, but uh, it's the truth. You know, last year, all year, the mainstream media, whether it be in crypto news or whether it be in regular news, they were propagating to the people that we were under high inflation. We were not. We were under high deflation. We were in deflationary times. And deflation is when the dollar goes up in value, weighing asset prices down, where it actually makes it cheaper to purchase, uh, purchase items. Um, so, again, because the weight of the dollar, this was crushing asset prices, going lower, and it, it spooked a lot of investors um, out of their positions, thinking that they're running away from inflation. They were running away from deflation because the dollar was so powerful. It was at 114 it hasn't been to those levels in over 20 years. So, you know, now that we're actually in inflationary times, we're watching the dollar go down in value. So, you know, as the dollar goes down in value, asset prices are going to go up. And as the Fed and Yellen and everyone else has been telling everybody within the market, inflation is going to be projected on the rise all year this year and more so after June, um, which ultimately is going to lead us into 2024 of uh, uh, Bitcoin halving. So, you know, this is the very beginning of a brand new bull cycle and bull cycles happen over a course of years, not four months. So, you know, I, I think people, I think bears especially should be careful because max pain is going to happen this year and it's not going to be on the downside. It's going to be more so on the upside for those that don't get in now as the dollar drains out of buying power. And guys, I was just bringing up a chart to just show you what Dion was referencing He's referencing the D, uh, DXY. Um, that is the dollar index. And he, like he was saying, towards the, I guess this was October 2022, it was around 114, which means the dollar is very strong in what it can buy. Um, and you can see here now <laughs> we're in an area where it just came up from 101. Um, and it's sitting around 103, um, which you can see here, you know, um, with the 50 crossing um, the um, with the 200, excuse me, crossing the 50 is actually very bearish. That's called the death cross for you guys who not, are not familiar with this. Um, this is the day chart, by the way. So, um, yeah, things do not look very good right now for the dollar and its value. OK, um, go ahead. Uh, absolutely. And uh, and to piggyback off of that, you know, it you have to take a look at what Japan has done uh, uh, besides China. You know what I mean? China, you know, it, it used to hold U.S. dollar bonds at about 
I think 1.3 trillion. Now they're at roughly 900 billion or so. Uh, Japan had um, actually, I'm sorry, I take that back. It was China that had 1.2, 1.2 trillion, um, and they went down to about 900 billion or so. And then Japan was actually at 1.3, if I'm not mistaken, almost 1.4 trillion dollars in, in U.S. debt. And uh, they ended up dumping, I think, down to one trillion now. So they've actually dumped more dollars than China has, except China is getting all the all the backlash for what Japan has been doing. But again, you know, it, it's not only them, though. It's it's all central banks. All central banks are trying to defend their currencies that they represent. Um, and uh, in doing so, they're trying to dump these U.S. dollar bonds. And, and rightfully so. It's not because of malice intent, but, you know, a, a strong dollar is bad for the world. It's bad for global trade. It's bad for a variety of different reasons. You know, uh, we saw actually a lot of economies and a lot of currencies you know, completely collapse uh, last year. Um, but I do think the U.S., it's it's the U.S.'s turn to go through that turmoil this year. I, I really do feel based on where we're at that we're going to be watching a serious decline in the U.S. dollar. Uh, I would say anywhere between 30 to 40 percent from all time high, which was 114. I think in the next two years, we should see the dollar at 75 cents, 80 cents is kind of what my what I'm. Predicting. Yeah. But Dion, <laughs> but, but Dion, people are crazy right now about oh the 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 SEC is coming after Paxos, they're coming after staking. People are nuts right now over I crypto. Honestly, I you know I'm bullish over the over the news. I I think it's. See, the problem with mainstream crypto media is you're running more into sensationalism than, you know, educated talk. I feel, you know, a lot of these guys, um, they've just have been around for a while. But, you know, if you pay attention to the data, it's nowhere nowhere near as close as where we're at when it comes to economics. Um, and, the, and that's what you actually need. You don't need sensationalism. You don't need bullshit. You need real data. And, you know, based on what's going on, I'm pretty goddamn bullish, not not only because of what I said prior but because Bitcoin having is 2024 and where we're at we're marching a day closer every single day. Not only that, let's take a look at stable coins. Stable coins, I feel eventually, if not already, they have the U.S. dollar by the balls. And the reason why is because a lot of these stable coins that are operating in the U.S. are trying to operate for USD. They are buying and backing their currency with U.S. treasuries. And the U.S. Treasuries on the two-year right now is 4.5%. And Coinbase was actually offering 4% yield. So they're actually making 0.50% margin on giving people or you putting their money or you're putting your money into their bank. And they're giving you that 4%, which is definitely a great deal compared to the banks that we have. And they're still getting half a percentage point on that principle, which is pretty nice. But... We should remember that a lot of these stable coins, not just USDC, uh, but also Tether, back their currency with U.S. dollar bonds, U.S. treasuries. So with enough of this accumulated and, you know, to be honest with you, if it's not already done right now, it will be done eventually where they're going to have enough U.S. treasuries to make an impact on the U.S. dollar. And I do think that is going to be a political power. I really do think so. Um, that's just something that's been in my mind in the background, because if, let's say if they, we do get into this phase where USDC needs to defend their peg, Tether needs to defend their peg, you know, they could crash the dollar to defend their peg. Think about that. What would that do to happen? Think about that. It's huge. So a lot of people have been actually propagating on the opposite end of this saying, well, if they lose their peg, the market's going to collapse. I don't think so. I think it, it, they can actually make a deep impact at not only to keep themselves alive, but also to raise asset prices once they accumulate enough U.S. treasuries. And they have been for a very long time. Uh, so, you know, it, there is a there is a catch 22 to that whole stable coin thing. But let's let's dive away from that real quick. OK, that's just something that I have in my back pocket. But wait, there's more. What I've been considering is the fact that, um, first of all, DeFi is DeFi, and that's why we're here. You know, the more and more scrutiny we get from governments of any nature, wherever they may be, it's just 
another sales pitch for why crypto and DeFi is important when we're fighting against tyranny with blockchain. You know, blockchain in general and DeFi is the way to fight against tyranny. And what we're fighting against is corruption. At, 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 anybody could take a look at any of these cases that have provided the SEC with full stage, with, you know, with every opportunity to provide a rule book, and they haven't. They've been just doing pay for play and they've been doing a lot of just, you know, um, I would say exploitation of companies uh, oh, yeah. over, over what they're supposed to do when it comes to representing the people. So, you know, the fact that this is happening, it's just all the more cause for DeFi and they'll operate with or without the U.S.'s consent. And that's what's going to happen. Unfortunately, you know, it, it, they're not going to be able to take down these websites because the websites are going to be .eth or they're going to be Web3 domains. Uh, so they're not going to be able to take those down if they try to target the websites. If they try to target apps, then there'll be dApps. If they try to target uh, uh, the currencies, well, you can't you can't uh, mute immutable code. It's code. You can't do anything. You, there's nothing they can do. So the more and more that we see the scrutiny, the more and more we're going to see crypto entrepreneurs and innovation build around it or just continue to operate because there's literally nothing they could do. So it, to me, the whole thing over stable coins, it just made more things like Tether or it made more things like USDD, which is Tron's decentralized stable coin. It's just a more it's going to be more business and more market share for DeFi marketplaces, which is USDD or, you know, well, Tether is trying to walk that line. But I don't think, you know, for long. But again, it. There's going to be DeFi stable coins, and now we, there's USDD and a variety of other coins that are going to sprout out because of this. They're going to take market share from USDC um, and, and Tether if Tether's continuously trying to play the game. Um, and then besides that, let's say for staking. Staking was no different. I felt like when that news came out, I was like, damn, this is bullish because now a lot of people are going to go to DeFi staking projects versus staking their coins on exchanges which means that less people are going to have to sell because they're going to be locking up their tokens in DeFi wallets or they're going to lock up their tokens in other mechanisms that are that are off, off of these centralized places. So, uh, you know, personally, all the FUD to me was just miseducation. You know, I, you know, the people that were really scared of it, they didn't have enough data. They didn't have enough, enough education to back up the confidence. And now, you know, we're here with Black Rule Investing and MYC ODAP to tell you guys, we're giving you guys the data to arm yourself with bullish data. So that way, when you hear things like this, you could say, why am I going to be scared of scrutiny and regulations when DeFi cannot be stopped? 100%. So, 100%. And you, you touched on something I really like there. Um, also, um, abroad it seems like crypto is extremely strong abroad um so much so that you got play things like lcx you guys know how much i've talked about lcx on this channel um monty metzger the uh ceo of lcx which is a member of the world economic forum i might not i, I might also add they're doing staking on euros for seven percent i've been hearing um you know something um the next in line besides the U.S. dollar isn't the yuan. It isn't the ruble. It isn't shit. You know, it, the euro could do something this time. I, you know, that was a con I, I did actually hear a few conversations about maybe the euro picking up where the dollar left off. I don't know. Um, but it's interesting thought. A very interesting thought. Um, what have you heard on this on the euro? Go ahead. Oh, well, uh, Monty Metzger, he's offering like 7%. It seems like they're making this like Euro stable type coin where you can stake it on LCX for 7%. He actually came out in support of something that Brian Armstrong said, like staking should be here to stay. Basically, um, it would hurt the crypto market in the US if Gary Gensler came after that, you know, Coinbase has backing for BlackRock, and we know that BlackRock CEO Gary um, Larry Fink is an advisor on the World Economic Forum, hence, you know, and then you got the connection with LCX being members of the World Economic Forum. So it seems like they're fine with staking. 
Um, I think a lot of the American play may be to line up Ethereum and have Ethereum be the it thing here in America. But um, I don't know if they can do that and then cut out all of crypto. Yeah, all I don't think they accomplish that. I, I think, per, I mean, well, personally, you know, we have to hear the message. Uh, we have to hear the bias in the message, okay? Because, you know... First of all, you know, that is not going to harm the crypto market. It, it, I think it, it'll enhance the market to get away from centralized exchanges because we, we've already seen how much money was lost due to malpractice or due to, you know, yeah. security issues. You know, they see the, the thing with crypto is it's all about self custodian or self custody, um, you know, where you're the custodian of your money. And, you know, it, this really falls into um, it. It falls into so many different um, things, honestly. It's like the reason why Brian Armstrong and, you know, a lot of these guys say those things like LCX is because they're scared. You know, if they get screwed over, then someone else is going to get the business. So it has nothing to do with the crypto market being on or off. It's about who's going to get the business. And I don't think BlackRock is in the business of losing. So, right. you know, to be honest with you, you know, the, on that side of things, I, I feel confident that this is going to, I, I, you know, I'm not a person that likes to say regulations is coming because I don't care. I, you know, I personally, I'm a guy that loves saying something like, you know, scalability has nothing to do with regulations because it's the truth. Yeah. It has nothing to do with it. And a lot of the all time highs that we've seen had nothing to do with regulations. So it's not that we would be hurt or we would be left behind. It's that. They're the ones that are hurting. They're the ones that will be left behind. A lot of the payment rails like Visa and MasterCard are already going to become off ramps for crypto uh, currencies uh, from different blockchains. They don't have no, they don't even care about the exchanges. So, you know, it's their fight for survival, not ours. You know, they will either survive with us or we'll survive without them. And I think that's why it's a big push for this year. I really do feel like regulations is going to be unlocked this year. I really do. And I'm not a person that typically feels those things. I'm not a person that even tries to talk about it because I don't care. I don't think it's relevant. But based on the data before me, I feel like regulations is going to happen this year. I don't know when, but I think it's going to be this year. Ooh, very, very, very spicy. Very spicy. Um now, where do you think bank coins like um, XRP, um, Stellar, where do they fit in with that regulation? I mean, it, it depends how much money they're going to take in. You know, that, that's what really that's what that's the real thing. You know, um, see, here's here's my issue. See, even if we got institutional investment, which I feel we do, I feel like we have institutional investment in a variety of different coins already. Um, and that still doesn't make huge impacts in these prices you know I, I do think that we still have cycles and cycles to go to see wild things i mean this is clearly going to be an over 80 trillion dollar marketplace eventually um i i'm considering maybe 10 trillion by the end of this next cycle or so but you know uh, it's a tough call, man. It really is. I don't think that XRP is going to be anywhere near 589 or 10,000 or anything else. These riddles propagate or anything like that. I do feel like uh, I think two to five USD is something to to kind of consider in a forecast. Um, but again, you know, it, XRP, it, it shouldn't be crazy expensive. I don't think it's actually healthy for the ecosystem to have that that layer one expensive. And the reason why unfortunately is because it's supposed to be liquidity it's supposed to support a, a big ecosystem so the the xrp layer is going to house a massive ecosystem in the future and yeah you know xrp could scale but i don't think it's going to scale to the four digit numbers or three digit numbers that eth will or eth did or bitcoin did just because of the tokenomics i think that this coin even at full price discovery needs to be under ten dollars it needs to be I would say two to five USD or somewhere fluctuating. Can it go higher over time? Yeah, you know, of course. But can you imagine trying to open a Sum wallet if it's too grand to open a Sum wallet? You know, I mean, you think about the the prices that some of these guys put out there. You know, guys, a Sum wallet you have to you have to pay ten XRP to get in. 
So if XRP is like two grand, <laughs> you know, or for 10,000, just to open a wallet, what do you, what do you think is going to happen? It's not going to be sustainable. So, you know, there, there's just different things like that. I think about where I'm like, man, you know, could be maybe, you know, but it, it just doesn't make sense to me. I do think that, um, XRP is going to serve as liquidity only and it's support it's supposed to support um, a variety of different projects and eventually a lot of those projects are going to need that XRP to house in their token eco ecosystem. I think what the XRP community needs to focus on is not on the layer one scalability, but the scalability of the of the, you know, the DeFi projects with real use case like solo or Sologenic, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. solo, solo is a 400 million coin cap. It's built on XRPO. It's probably, I would say, the most valuable asset within the XRPO ecosystem. I believe it'll do well with or without the license, you know, with or without this case settlement. I'm still anticipating maybe a 350 USD price range. But if it does get, if XRP gets clarity, you know, and I do think XRP will get clarity this year. I think it'll get relisted this year. I think Dragon Chain will get listed this year. And the reason why is because of library coin case. That library coin case was historical. It didn't, get, it didn't get press. And, you know, and, and to be honest with you, I found it suspicious that it didn't get it didn't get press. It didn't get press from any of the, the mainstream uh, media people. You know, they could. I mean, who knows who these people actually work for? You know, uh, there's a reason why uh, uh, names are as big as they are or whatever the case. You know, they could be puppeted or whatever the case. But, you know. At the end of the day, this was a historical case, and the judge had basically made a judgment that you know tokens sold after ICO don't don't aren't aren't securities. There's also yes. been other, other moments and other judgments where, where ETH was not a security because they said that it's code. You know, you can't. It's how, how could code be a security? So you know, these are all different things that that have been talked about recently to the point where it's like I think that these guys have enough ammunition and a enough, an, enough dialogue from the sec themselves to utilize as a cross-reference to fight them in court now so i do think that we will see clarity this year i do think xrp and dragon chain will be listed at the same time and uh and another thing you know what, what's kind of strange is nobody is you know paying attention to dragon chain they're still operating they're still building they have a, a social app den.social it's live it's running every single day i've played with it myself and, you know, there's a variety of other things that they're doing. They do live streams all the time, every week, you know. So I'm like, how come Dragon Chain's not getting uh, any any support, you know, when they had the same scrutiny that XRP has? They don't. But here's the big difference. They don't have the funding like XRP did. See, the reason yeah. why is because XRP was able to retain more capital because it was a large cap versus a small cap like Dragon Chain. Dragon Chain has 433 million coin cap and uh, XRP had um, 100 billion. So, you know, I, I think that was a reason why Dragon Chain couldn't obtain the funding to continue marketing. But they had the same scrutiny, you know, as Library Coin, same scrutiny as XRP. So Dragon Chain, XRP and Library Coin are in the same predicament. Yet Library Coin and XRP have been bought and they continue to buy it, even though there's a, a lawsuit on it. So I, clearly, you know, it's just a marketing thing at that point, you know, because this company is still operating. Um, so, you know, these are just companies I, I have um, personally been paying attention to, but I, I do think a lot of people are going to miss that boat if they don't pay attention a little bit more. Uh, I, I really do feel clarity is going to happen this year. And uh, I'm glad you mentioned uh, enterprise. A lot of companies are gearing up for that enterprise and crypto space, um, one of which being Casper, which we've covered before on here. Um, other ones um, are out there and building as well. You could kind of include Litecoin in that um, in that list as well. The whole big thing is the zero knowledge proofs. Uh, the enterprise people want to be able to hide salaries and hide what they're actually spending on certain projects. Once that's kind of solid and in place, I think we see enterprises go to crypto, um, or at least uh, those type of cryptos, very much so um, because. Swift, let's let's face it, it's old and outdated. Um, something's going to replace it. I mean, Stellar, XRP, one of those bank coins, but Swift's done with. It's done. So, well, I, I think everyone's going to be done with uh, in intermediaries. Uh, I, I don't know how to say it. In my, I get tongue twisted, but uh, intermediaries. Uh, there, there's not mm -hmm. going to be a middle person anymore. It's going to just be straight peer to peer. Um, 
I think the only time where maybe we'll have a middleman maybe is is maybe the, just the centralized exchanges. But uh, as for the other things like banking and all that stuff, I, I think that if they don't make their own stuff, CBDCs or whatever the case, just going to get left behind. I mean, if the payment rails or the credit cards are already transferring over to these other other entities, there's no point because you got to really think about it. Like what's funny is like everybody has this scrutiny for exchanges and and uh, uh, crypto coins or crypto uh, companies to do one for one, right? They do one for one. They say, oh, you know, if you're if you're holding tokens in exchange, it should be one for one, right? But your bank is like 97, like is holding 97% or more of your liquidity and showing you 3% reserves, you know? Like if we had the same scrutiny for our own banks that we have on these exchanges, <laughs> these banks would be destroyed. I oh, think- Oh yeah, they'd be like- 85 bankrupt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like it would literally be like an apocalypse. You know what I'm saying? You know, so that's why it's like it's funny when they we see these banks in the the news scrutinize these exchanges for not doing one for one. Okay, maybe they were doing 70%, you know what I mean? Or maybe they were doing 30%, you know. They didn't maybe they were doing like 0.5 uh or maybe they were doing 50% to every one or whatever. Whatever it may have been. But at the end of the day, these banks are like no, they're under 10% in reserves compared to what these guys are doing. So, you know, I, and I felt like Binance and also Tether, you know, they did not get enough credit for what they did. They had the largest bank run in human history, billions of dollars within 24 to 48 hours. Tell me what bank of yours that you put your money in could do that. None of them. That's true. So, you know, I, I felt like the scrutiny with Tether and Binance and, and the exchanges, even FTX, uh, you know, is as wrong, wrong as they try to make him seem, which, I, you know, yes, you know, he was doing bad things. But, you know, at, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, for what he is doing or what he did compared to what the banks do today, you know, <laughs> what they deemed him as illegally doing, the banks do legally. And they take yep. even more liquidity from us and don't show the the other hand, you know. So I, I I've always felt like you know, the scrutiny should have belonged to the banks over that whole thing, you know. But again, you have to you guys got to get as well the the war, you know. You have to understand the war you're living in right now. You have banks, which are governments, which are also companies, all fighting and not liking what's going on because they're going to lose massive amounts of business. And because of this, you don't think that they're in the pockets of media companies talking shit to try yep. to get you to let go of your coins, to get you to buy coins on PayPal instead, you know, that type of nonsense, buying coins off of these apps, you know, like to me, to be honest with you, I, on, I hate how Bitcoin archive and uh, coin telegraph and the rest of these other puppet media companies, we call the mainstream media crypto companies, they sit there and try to talk to you about how bullish it is that PayPal or um, what, what are the other ones, uh, the other companies that are that are taking custody, Cash App, Robinhood, you know, all yeah. these companies taking custody of your crypto assets and selling them to you and you can't send them out. That's so bullshit. Fine. That was yeah. bullshit. You know, in fact, I, I felt like we should be speaking against that. Like these are big companies that that have so many arms and media to commercialize the industry. And that's cool. Awareness is cool, but we're missing the doctrine. And, and that's the whole reason why I was so upset when they were talking bearish about the market when the stable coin nonsense was going on or the staking nonsense. I was like, I feel like, you know, there's the DeFi doctrine, the one that crypto stands for, the one that Web3 stands for. And then we have all the mainstream media bullshit going on saying that everything that's bullish for DeFi is bearish for the market. And that bias needs to be called out because we have to understand that these guys that are, or not you, <laughs> but you know, uh, but guys that are probably for PayPal and a lot of these other big conglomerates to take custody of your money and take custody of your keys and all of these other things that are trying to propagate that it's bearish to try to make you want this are the enemy. Those are the enemy. The ones that are telling you that we need these exchanges. We need these exchanges for staking. We need PayPal to sell you Bitcoin. We need Cash App to sell you Bitcoin. No. Stop that shit right now.
That is not what we're here for. We're here for self custody, a hundred percent all the time, you know? So oh, yeah. I know I'm, maybe I'm speaking to the choir here, but you know, I, I, I mean, I just feel like a lot of these mainstream media companies need to be called out for this shit. That's not that's not what we should be teaching newcomers. There's people coming in by the thousands every day to this market and they're being miseducated by the biggest arms in media. And these are literally the problem. These are the biggest problems and they're manipulating our market. They're taking advantage of investors. They're making investors completely, including the SEC, completely vulnerable when Everything about what we live for in crypto is about DeFi. It's about Web3, self-custody. And there's another word I'm looking for, and I keep I keep losing it. Um, it'll come back to me. There's some, It really means a lot, too. That's what's making me mad. <laughs> but you, no you, you want to piggyback off this? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, you said a great lot there. And um, the part I want to pick off is... Um, the, the mainstream media, okay? The mainstream media are giving this whole picture of be afraid of crypto, be very, very afraid. Like only us, only us like real crypto heads know about Cointelegraph, right? And in the Cointelegraphs, we hear about, okay, um, John Deaton's done this where now secondary market sales of crypto is now not considered security. So we hear that. But what other people in mainstream media who are watching the Andrew Ross Sorkins of the world are hearing Gary Gensler say, OK, um, we got to regulate crypto. We got to regulate staking, you know, fought not following up on questions. Might be in who knows? They all might be in bed together. You know, I, I just feel like they, they just might. They just might. Yeah. But mainstream media is like <laughs> point, pumping out. Be afraid of crypto. And I think most normal people will not invest until it's way too late. Permissionless. I'm sorry. I just got it. That's oh, go what I was looking for. Sorry. Keep going. Oh, I knew what was coming. Sorry. <laughs> I just don't want to. Free. I just don't want to let it go. So, but go ahead. Okay, guys. Per permissionless. I knew it was coming. I hate when that happens too. By the way, okay. but but um. So I, I'd love it if you guys have your mainstream media family. Watch this because they never or, or watch these channels because what they hear from Gensler and all of that is not actually what's happening behind the scenes. Behind the scenes, you got things like Stellar doing like CBDCs for the Ukraine and aid for the Ukraine. You got things like uh, XRP teamed up with Bank of America and working on the British pound and things like that. You got LCX over here, like staking and giving money 7% um, interest on the Euro. You got things like Hedera working with uh, CBDCs out there. And what a, what a week for Hedera, right? Um, that was nice. I, you know, I love H bar and, you know, I couldn't, I don't have any, that's what makes me mad about it, you know, but I, I, I knew that three, that three, four cent range. I was like, man, that is perfect. You know, but I can't get all of them. Unfortunately, you know, so you guys please, you know, make the hundred X for me on that. You know, uh, I, I do feel like that's going to be a beastie pick. I think it'll break a, well over a dollar this cycle. I think what it, it went up to what a uh, 60 cents last cycle. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It'll be well, well. I would say well above a dollar fifty this 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 turnaround. I would say. Oh yeah, I agree. I totally agree with you on that one. Um, they're working on tokenization. I think tokenization is going to be pretty big. Um, but I do caution people to be careful because tokenization, I think, is to get liquidity from us uh, plebs, right? So you have to really not look plebs, at tokenization. Plebs. plebs are people that don't invest. OK, let's put it that way. <laughs> well, but, just, just be careful there, because I think that the main thing is like, OK, let's let's just drain a little more liquidity from these guys. But just just be careful with the whole tokenization thing. But yeah, uh, tokenization is going to be big. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Maybe we are plebs to them to the mega whales out there. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> right. So the like cost swabs of the world and the, yeah, like, the guys that work at Swift. But the um, wearing fucking like night night robes and wizard robes and shit like that you know did you see that um 
uh, that Prince Harry picture with that music artist or whatever wearing that wizard cloak and stuff. It's so weird. Oh, God. That is, there's so much occult. If you just look at the Rihanna halftime show, you know, like oh, yeah, I saw that she put up the uh, uh, she put up the triangle. You know, she she did the she rock did. rock nation sign supposedly. You know, and but, and they were like doing a whole Knights of Templar symbolism with the white and the red, but that's a whole other topic if we go into that. But uh, yeah, guys, um, <laughs> there's so much going on with these uh, coins, and I think the regular folks are hearing a very different uh, message about crypto. And the whole thought is be very, very afraid. So um, while we are here just packing our bags, I think we in a couple of years will be very happy. Whereas people, people are going to be getting in late buying our bags, unfortunately. I mean, they'll probably wait to buy the tops in 2025, you know, um, when the mainstream media is pumping everything they can out, you yep. know, Um but, you know, it's funny. It's like I used to tell people that that uh, knew me, like they'd run into me or whatever and be like, hey, man, I saw you're, you're in crypto and all that. And, uh, you know, they're like, oh, what happened with the crash? You know, whatever they like, you know, it's funny. It's like, you know, when everyone saw how big we won, you know, uh, and, you know, nobody wanted to talk to us. No one said anything to us. Right. But when it crashed, that's when you got all the phone calls. Oh, how is everything going? You know, this wanted to like suffer, like bring in the suffering, you know. And, it, you know, I used to be funny. I used to be like, oh, I'm going to start at Wendy's next week, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, but you know, thankfully, you know, um, we did tremendously well. You know, we had a lot of double digit to triple digit multipliers. And um, I did have some fun with some money. Uh, but, you know, I invested it, you know, I wanted to build our own software and that's what we did. We worked on it for a year, NYC ODAP. Um, and then after that, you know, we we kept a great deals of, of, of money within the markets and we, you know, we converted a lot of profits into metals and we waited for the right moments. And uh, did we go through some tribulations last year? Yeah, absolutely. You know, there was some very, uh, I would say some pretty steep losses, but I feel based on what we saw out there where people were losing over 95% for us to only lose 30% or less, I felt very proud of our community. We hedged in a lot of emerging markets like Bluezill, BLZ. A lot of people um, don't give that that project enough credit, but that that project saved us. You know, for that first six months when Luna was crashing and a little bit of FTX, uh, we hedged in Bluezill. We got in at 13 cents. It did 4X, two, I mean, it did uh, 2X four times and then 3X twice all within January to June. This was meanwhile, while Luna was crashing and the entire Cosmos ecosystem was collapsing because of um, lock-in staking periods and all this other nonsense. Uh, so we did tremendously well with that particular coin, just holding value during all that turmoil. And then I want to say in August, um, we had found ArcBlock and that's kind of the, the next big thing for us. You know, we really like ArcBlock, Blues OBLZ I've been collecting. Um, it just got through uh, integrating with Osmosis and Kepler Wallet. So staking on Cosmos is going to go live for Blues LBLZ, which used to be an ERC-20 token. So now they have a bridge for both. So there's that. That's awesome. Um, and then Parsec. Parsec's uh, Web3 data as well. That's huge. Don't forget uh, ArcBlock just deployed AI Blocklet. That's blockchain agnostic and the tools could be used in any ecosystem. So it's huge. So, you know, ArcBlock, ABT, BLZ, um, PRQ remain my top my top priorities just simply just because Web3, I feel, is going to lead the bull run. Um, but, you know, <laughs> Alan says plebs know their place by the tops to pump our bags, plain and simple. Uh, you know, and then uh, uh, besides that, I really like Jasmine. You know, for those of you that were collecting Cardano, VeChain, HBAR, and the decimals way back in the day, you, got, you guys remember those golden days? I remember those days, and and now I think I think back to the days where I sold too early. I sold. I was the, one of those guys that were was buying H bar and V chain for decimals, and I sold all of it like a dummy too early. And Jasmine, I'm not going to make that same mistake. I bought it at several decimals over of a penny, and I'm not going to sell. That's going to be another one of those opportunities like Cardano V chain H bar that you could buy in the decimals. And later on, you're going to remember, oh, my God, that was such a good company. I remember I, I bought it for decimals. Why the hell didn't I hold that? 
I'm not going to do it again. So, you know, I'm going to learn my think, uh, if they're listed on uh, Coinbase, they're listed on there for a reason, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you know, you know, a lot of people don't know uh, ArcBlock got listed on Coinbase for free. Um, after W3C and CERN uh, um, uh, did the recommendation for DID Core, which was what ArcBlock wrote out for them. After they accepted that recommendation, three days later, ArcBlock was listed on Coinbase for free. So that's a huge, huge thing. And, and ArcBlock, since 2017, since ICO, they have not sold a single token. Okay. So that's a huge, huge, um, uh, uh, I think a huge fact that we should know because now we understand that, you know, Robert's in this for glory. He's already a successful entrepreneur, you know, so like I really trust him. I have full faith in what he's built. I, I see the the use case for normal, regular people. And that's I feel like that's a big thing that people are missing. Like, I think it's bullish when we find a project that we could use. Whoop. Dion, you cut out for a second. Oh, no, the Chinese spy balloon got Dion. It's so crazy. I knew it. I knew it. Why? Why? I mean, why? No, seriously. <laughs> Let's just wait for a second to see if uh, Dion comes back here. <laughs> Gecko's killed my computer. <laughs> You're bugged. Right. Dion got a little rug there. Oh, Dion's computer died. So he'll be back here. But one of the things he just mentioned about Art Block, I want to share that with you guys right quick, is they are working with some AI here. Um, they got listed for free on Coinbase. But you can see here, AI generated girl. I don't know. Um, if this is generated from Arc Blocks, uh, Blocklet, but um, yeah, I, 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 I see what's going on here. Um, very, very nice uh, generated um, woman right there. Like, I don't prefer blondes myself. Like, I don't mind them, but you know, there we go. Um, all right. So pretty cool. What's going on with Arc Block right there? Seems like he generated a few here. Real still there before the photos now matured. Yeah, that is pretty wild. So pretty, pretty interesting. Pretty interesting there. Let me come back here. Okay, yeah, so yeah, it's an AI uh, blocklet generated person and it talks. That is very, very dope right there. Um, that is very dope. Makes me even more bullish than I am on uh, ArcBlock right here. For some reason, now my computer's acting silly. Okay, there we go. So pretty, pretty neat. There's some couple, couple other pictures here. She said, thank you all. Okay, you got to share that. The last video has the AI talking video. Okay, let's see here. I think that's the one with the video here. No? Okay. Maybe not. Let's see if we can find it. Yeah, I can't find the clip where she's actually talking. Let's go click in here and see if we can find it.
Okay, guys, I don't see the clip. But yeah, guys, um, I think there's nothing for us to worry about here um, with what's going on. Yeah, she looks Asian. She looks she does she's uh she looks uh very very fine Asian. Um, um yeah, I think I think they're they're trying to give us a reason to fear here, reason to shake shake out here in America on crypto. Um, if we look the worldwide, uh, things are very strong for crypto, extremely, extremely strong. Um, you got so many things going on with Stellar, with Algorand, with all of the bank coins, with crypto, that um, is amazing. And one that doesn't get talked about a lot um, is definitely Tron. Tron is definitely strong over in Asia as well. Um, never gets talked about, but if you come and look at their DeFi, they're in the top 10 of DeFi. Um, and I know that's something we were just talking about um, with the DeFi. As a matter of fact, let's look at the top 10 coins or chains in DeFi, right? And DeFi is something that I, I think they just, they won't be able to stop. They can't stop it. Like once they stop one one chain, another one's just going to pop up. And um, if you guys have any questions, be sure to put them in the chat. So there you go. Tron's actually number number two with 5.07. Bill, locked up. Okay. Followed by Binance, then up. Arbitrum and Polygon, which kind of Ethereum based. Um, Avalanche, Optimism, Phantom, Kronos, and Mixon. Speaking about Avalanche, let me make sure you guys can see this. Okay. Okay, perfect. So, so you can see here, Tron's number two, like I was saying. Sorry, I didn't know that wasn't sharing. But speaking about Avalanche, if we come over here and look at the Dig Digital Pound organization, guys who are working on the British Digital Pound, right? There's a few people that are here, right? Ripple, Quant. Accenture, Avalanche, right? Avalanche is one that kind of falls under the radar a little bit. However, these guys just got deals in place with two of the top um, cloud storage places in um, AWS. Um, and I think they got something in place with Azure too. I know they got something in place with AWS and I know they got something in place with Alibaba Cloud. So that's huge. And that's huge. So Avalanche really doesn't get talked about enough when it comes to this whole bank coin situation. But not only with the bank coin situation, like we just saw, they're also top 10 in DeFi stored with almost a billion locked here. So Avalanche is another one that's very, very, very high on my list. Wish Dion was here so we could tell him a little bit. I would love to hear his opinion on uh, Avalanche. I am very high on them myself here. Okay, look on ArcBlock YouTube. Okay, let's go look on ArcBlock's YouTube and see this AI generated girl. I think that would be pretty cool to see. Bear with me just a second while I pull it up. Do, 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 do.
Actually, I don't see any links to their YouTube. I just went to their website. I don't see it. I just went to their coin market cap. I also don't see a link there. Let me go on Twitter and see if it shows a link to the website. Now, if anyone has a link to our block YouTube, we could go look that up right quick. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I know, I know their YouTube channel, but I don't have a link to it. Crypto Clady, you said you have one. I don't see the link you just posted. It must have deleted it, maybe. So I think this is something people would want, would love to see. Yeah, YouTube must be blocking it. Okay, let's see here. I'll try to find it here on my on my tab. Uh, Arc block. Probably just gonna give me a whole bunch of Arc block. Okay, perfect. Well, I have to tell Robert that he needs to add that to uh, coin market cap and stuff. All right, perfect, perfect. Let me know if you guys can hear the audio because I don't know if I checked that. Welcome to ArcBlock. ArcBlock is a platform that allows for the development. Okay. I'm not sure if that's what we wanted to see here. Okay, I think it is her that we want to see. Welcome to ArcBlock. ArcBlock is a platform that allows for the development and deployment of decentralized applications. ArcBlock aims to make it easier for developers to create blockchain applications and also make it e easier for people to use those applications. Can you guys hear that? Yeah, it's not her, but why it's not sharp. It's my, uh, it's my resolution. Let me see if I can fix that right quick. It's like she's underwater. Okay, there we go. Let's try that one more time. Welcome to ArcBlock. ArcBlock is a platform that allows for the development and deployment of decentralized applications. ArcBlock aims to make it easier for developers to create blockchain applications and also make it easier for people to use those applications. The platform also includes a marketplace where users can buy and sell services and products. Okay, cool. Um, 
I would have preferred the other girl, but uh, that's cool. Okay, and then let's close that out, shall we? All right, nice. Doesn't even exist. That's pretty cool. Um, that's for, that's very cool. Imagine what that would be like soon. Very crazy, dude. Yeah, it will be absolutely amazing. Also, I saw another video of her doing on an, an app as a real estate investor. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, AI, AI is the future, y'all. AI is the future, y'all. I can't wait for a new program for a wife that listens. I feel you, bro. I feel you. Oh, 100%. 100%. Yeah, her, her gestures were a little bit exaggerated, but yeah, just wait until... Wait until they get that all figured out. Um, it'll be insane, insane. Um, there's just so much AI can do for you right now. Um, and it's just in the beginning stages. It's crazy. But yeah, guys, that's a... Uh, that's that's really what we wanted to hit you with today. Um, you know, I'll have Dion back on another day. Um, be sure to check me out tomorrow. We're going to be doing the uh, Gentleman of Crypto show um, in our normal little time slot on Wednesday. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for coming out. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good one, guys. Peace.